I can't believe we've been in Key Largo for two weeks now. Two weeks, and it's almost time to go, and we really don't want to. No, no, we don't. I think this is part of a reminder to ourselves that it's okay to slow down. I'm realizing, too, the next couple of spots I've booked for like a week and a week and a week, and I'm like, uh... Are we going to slow down? Yeah. I, I know we're trying to get different places and go different things, but... I feel like here, there's just so much to do even every day. We can have down days here at the water, and the girls would just love swimming. But but even our down days are like still a blast. Like we go out kayaking, or we just spend time. And anyways, we'll jump into that later. I'm going to try to make some changes on some of our future bookings and try to extend them out a bit and see if we can do that. Not too long, because that's the thing. Two weeks, Yeah, it really just will depend on the place, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. Because we stayed in Orlando for two months and we felt like we stayed there too long because at the end, we just had all of these friendships that were super hard to leave. Like our neighbors right down the street, Philip and Stephanie, were playing with all the time. And like the kids were so sad to leave. And so when we left, like if you caught our last podcast, we were talking about how I, I just had all these feelings of feeling like, oh my gosh, I want the kids to have friendships we have friends here we've just created all these wonderful relationships and now we're leaving and i crazy enough the kids did fine with all of that and i have to remind myself in this situation our kids are super adaptable and i mean the moment we got here to key largo it was so funny because we're parked right on the beach and scout was like can we stay here forever <laughs> yeah it, it was like and they immediately went down to the water started playing making some new friends they yeah. were fishing and catching crabs and doing all sorts of things just by themselves with their new friends. Yeah, Davy had just so excited they let her hold a fish, and that blew her mind. Yeah. She loved that. We're also realizing we like to be near the water. That oh, is, yeah. I mean, we already knew that internally, I think, but, like, it's just a reminder that, like, mm -hmm. hey, we, we enjoy being by the water. Yeah. The water is great. It's great for the kids. It's great for us. There's so much to do, and I feel like when we live in such a sensory, overloaded world, I mean, I get overwhelmed constantly, and I think our kids do too often, and I think being by the water and just being able to swim and being active makes all of us calmer. It's been about a month and a half since you quit your job. Since I quit, yeah, and I we're still trying to figure out the dynamics of what our roles and responsibilities are, because during that time, it hasn't just been normal day-to-day -day living for a while we had nieces come and stay well it's literally we you quit the next week my nieces came which we were so excited about that was so fun and then we've had taxes this yeah, whole time I've been focusing on taxes heads down a lot and then even just last weekend i flew from miami to las vegas for a weekend it was my sister's 50th birthday and we had a girls trip with my five sisters and that was just amazing and during all this, I mean, you've been able to put out, crank out some shorts, a few videos, and a, you know, long stuff. form here and there. But the truth is, is like by it's like, not enough. How do we? Well, and how do we do that? You have to spend time editing because Kelsey really has the editing skills of the chops. And while yes, I could learn that, it'd be a setback for me to start from ground zero just now to start doing that to help out with that. And so it's like, okay, well, how can I help out the most? Well, I can give her time to edit, and I go take the kids out, but. That's, that's been that's a real wanted, yeah. uh, well. That's just been a real role ver reversal for me because I love being a mom. I love being with our kids. I love being out, and I'm used to being out with our kids every day, all day. And so this has just been a really big switch for me for all of a sudden being the sole. Hi, Davy, come here. And it's not what, yeah, it's not what you want. It's just been a really big switch for me all of a sudden being the sole person needing to make sure that things are flowing and working and going so that's been a process so i feel like one thing that we really could do is sit down and figure out what we're in charge of wh who needs to do what and kind of divvy that up a little bit better i think it's just hard when editing takes up 90 percent of the, of the time. time and i know we could outsource and find an editor but mm -hmm. that's that's tricky to do too. We just started. Uh, Jordan Page just did another boot camp, and we started doing that. Um, yeah. This one's with it has some finances, which is a nice refresher for us, uh, especially since we're we don't have income coming in, so we want to be able to most efficiently use that money. Yeah. Uh, so we're going best. through all of our finances right now and seeing how much we have, what we can allocate for what, putting it in different bank accounts, so then we can make sure that we can live long term. Well, push our money out as far as we can mm -hmm. with this while we're working and, and trying to build the business here. So 
that's a big part of it. There's also going to be some time management, which is going to be great because especially that's part of what we're finding too. And we'll dive into this in a bit, but yeah, it's going to be a time management section as well as like a food prep section, which are all good. areas all we could use some so, serious help in. Yeah. So that I think that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting how we adapt those to our situation mm -hmm. of living remotely and traveling around with not as much food storage, for example, and groceries are a little bit different, I imagine, but maybe not. It's probably going to be the same thing, but yeah, we'll see when we get to there. So we're excited about that. That's going to mm -hmm. be helpful. Yeah, we've been trying to wake up at five every morning and work and have some time, but I just got sick. I literally came home on the flight from Vegas and just have been sick for the past few days. We like, haven't seen how this works yet, but yeah, yeah. But, but we we're thinking this would be that would be our collaborative time. Yeah, it's waking up at five, 5 a.m. morning. So when the girls wake up would be our collaborative time when we can both coordinate, prioritize, divvy up tasks for the week and know like, hey, this is what I'm going to be working on this week. This mm -hmm. is what Kelsey's going to be working on and vice versa and get that going. And then when the kids are awake, one of us, we're realizing one of us needs to be a parent during that time. Yeah. yeah. And so we'll just switch off and let, you know, I'll let Kelsey do work on her stuff. And then she'll watch the kids and I'll work on my stuff and we'll, we'll try to figure that out and mm -hmm. be taking the kids out. But at the same time, we also do like doing stuff together. So we do. And I think it's important every day to end as a family and go on a walk with Zeke and have that time to get eat dinner together at the table all together. Yeah. Because that's important to me is to have end that on a, our, our family time. Because I feel like that's the time that we can connect with our kids and ask, how was your day? What did you enjoy? Was there anything that was hard? You know, and be able to hopefully have those moments with our kids. Yeah. And then once they're in bed, then yeah, we get to work on stuff independently, I guess. Or yeah, most of the time it depends. I've been tired at night well, out of being in sun all day, partying really hard <laughs> while we've been here in Key Largo. And I, yeah. I think that's another reason why we should maybe stay longer. And I just need to switch my mindset on this because we love playing and we do value that family time together. I mean, we've been having such a blast here like we went snorkeling a little bit ago i've been trying to prep the girls a bit on getting out there and getting in the water and things like that um when their friend got pinched by a crab the first day they also became paranoid that like crabs are everywhere and crabs are going to pinch them i guess i'll try to show them no they're not and they like to swim away from you but we took them out on the snorkeling boat and it was out in the middle of the ocean which yeah was awesome. so it's an hour out they both jumped in mm -hmm. like fearlessly jumped in Granted, I mean, it was, we had wetsuits and stuff, but they got a little cold. Yeah, so they came back in. But I was proud of them, and they did it. And, you know, it was a, a good opportunity because when the girls were super nervous, I was like, well, when I get nervous, I like to sing the song to distract my mind. And so I am grateful for a lot of these opportunities because they are moments that we can hopefully teach our kids how to work through something. So I'm grateful because this is just a very different life and i feel like it creates opportunities for us to hopefully teach our kids skills help them, yeah help them learn and grow i mean i i don't have the skills myself but i'm pretending i do to be that mom to help them <laughs> well guess what you learn the skills when you put them to, you put them to use so oh i was at the park the other day with the girls and we were talking with a local who recommended definitely go to robbie's where they have these huge fish these tar Huge. tarpons i think tarpons i think is what they're called they're ginormous and you can go feed them so we go there and it's five dollars a bucket and you get i think it's like five or six little fish and you and, and it was so chaotic there's so many people there there were pelicans all over they're telling you watch out for the pelicans they're really aggressive signs everywhere so, say yeah pelicans, feed the pelicans. Are... they're really mean and aggressive and then there's these huge tarpon fish and so i was trying to be the example to davian scout because there's all these chaotic animals going around and I got my first fish and I, I went and stuck my hand down and the tarpon went up and got it until he got my hand and started bleeding a little bit. It wasn't bad. Like, I feel like it was more like a scrape than like a bite or something. But I didn't want the girls to see because I didn't want them to be scared and not put their hand in. And so I didn't show them till later. But they did great. They went ahead and stuck their hand in and... Oh gosh, they were huge, so great. Fish. It was so cute seeing them. Yeah, they were just like dropping the, you know, holding the fish. And, and of course, you know, the fish jumped out. They're like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Because like, it's just this huge fish. Yeah, well, and they can jump high. It's crazy how high they jump. Yeah, apparently that's how you can catch them to eat them, is you have the fish in your hand, and then they jump up, and they grab your arm, and you just pull them out of the water. Pretty cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, I felt so bad, though, at the end, because there was 
a pelican coming and Jake went to go shoot the I pelican shoot away and try to give some space to scout but then there was a sneaky pelican behind us yeah it came up just grabbed it out of her hand yeah, and just bit her hand got and the fish she was really brave yeah and she was very sad as well yeah but there's people all around with these staffs like banging on the ground trying to keep the pelicans out like i mean it's a real real intense thing there so i'm really bummed that she got bit but because she's been talking about it every day since yeah she probably doesn't like pelicans anymore <laughs> I don't know. We saw we saw some, and she was like, "There's pelicans." Yeah, she'll be keeping an eye out for pelicans. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. But I did notice at that moment, though, my first reaction was, oh, "Let's go get ice cream. Let's try and make everything better." And I I want to try and not associate food with coping, and because I feel like that's something that I have done a lot in my life is being like, "Oh, I'll just have a, I'll just have a treat that'll make me feel better," or like. You know, and I'm trying not to do that with our kids. And so I realized I jumped too quickly to be like, oh, my gosh, you're so sad. Let's go get an ice cream. And yes, although that can be great. And, you you should have just gone an ice cream I, and not associated. I, I, yeah, with exactly. I just should have said like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened. I saw some ice cream. Should we go get some ice cream? Instead, I'm like, let's go get an ice cream to make you feel better. Yeah, I need to like disassociate food and feelings and. At Robbie's, they also have some jet ski rentals as well as they'll take you out fishing. They have so many things to do there. So we're going we're gonna to definitely be doing some of those. So let's tonight some jet skis. We also need to come back because we want to take the kids deep sea fishing and that just sounds amazing. Yeah. I just didn't realize what a like outdoor sportsy place Key Largo is and the wet Key West and all of the keys. You know, it's just a very outdoorsy water activity filled place. Yeah. Skydiving. I got to go twice this week. That's intense. <laughs> I know I went in Las Vegas. And then I was looking in Key Largo and I was like, Oh my gosh, we can go skydiving here. I just didn't realize that like you can go at lots of different destinations. And some places are better than others, it sounds like. And apparently the Key West, Florida Keys is one of the top like, five or top the top ten in the world. Places to skydive. Like in the world. And it was awesome. It was awesome. I went this time as well. Because Jake didn't go with me when we were in Moab. I tried to get him to go with me and he didn't go. I was good. I was like, all right. I mean, I'd done it once before, but it was like more than ten years ago or so. Maybe not that long, but it was a long time ago. So how was skydiving this time? It was so awesome. <laughs> like this place was unreal. The The view that you can see of all the, the coral and the islands. And I saw sharks in the water as I was coming down. That's I mean, nice. like, that's awesome. My instructor pointed out, he's like, oh, there's some sharks. Check that out. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was a really epic, beautiful day. The way we did it too when we went skydiving is we each took turns going up. So that someone could be with the girls because they're, mm -hmm. I mean, they're four year old, four years old. So they got to stay down below, but they got to meet lots of other friends who were also wanting to go up and go skydiving too. So that I think was fun for them. And yeah. they still say they want to go when they turn 18. Yeah. I think this is where we're going to take them is the key, Florida Keys. Oh yeah. It's incredible. Those views are amazing. Like having water all beneath you and just crystal clear, like it was so cool. You can see the clouds in the water like the shadows on yeah. it and that was just amazing so yeah, i definitely want to do that again and i want to start maybe even like booking places that we go based off of if we can go skydiving there because i love it i love it i'm addicted i love it and the thing that i realized so this was my fourth time going and i mean i, I mentioned that i went last week and i think by doing these things regularly it's interesting because it was so calming this time. Like I had zero nerves. Like normally I feel like I get super anxious and then I was like having to run to the bathroom multiple times, making sure I got everything out. And, you know, and this time I just was felt content. I was excited and didn't have skydiving until 3.30 in the afternoon. And I think normally I would have been anxious all day and just been worrying about it, but I wasn't. Like we had fun going to the turtle hospital and the deer refuge. And I think before, I don't think I would have been able to enjoy myself at those places. And so I think it's a reminder to myself that 
it's good to put myself in these high intensity situations or things that make you uncomfortable because the more you do them, the more it feels normal and comfortable almost. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> and as we found as we go out and about and doing activities and doing things, new things, we're feel like we want to learn more. We want to learn more about things, especially what it seems as the environment is a big thing down here too. And that's what's been catching my eye. I feel like is mm -hmm. this concept of obviously, yeah, I don't like littering and trash and stuff like that. But like, even then I still feel like I go through too much plastic, too much consumables. And we saw these poor little turtles oh my that gosh. are, you know, they, they're in this hospital. Obviously it's great. They're helping them get better and stuff, but like just, so many of them had tumors. So many of them just had these issues where they were struck yeah. by boats and whatnot. Anyway, it's it's just something where, like, as we're learning more, I'm also trying to learn more about how to be more environmental, which is something I didn't expect. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, even just, like, we saw, like, a lot of times, like, the turtles will eat balloons because the they'll see, like, the balloon floating in the water and it kind of looks like a jellyfish and they just eat it. And then it ends up getting a bubble butt syndrome where they are constantly floating on the water and they can't go down. It's just making me more conscious of like, oh, I don't want to release something off into the air because you just don't know where it's going to go. There are things that I've cared about before, but just didn't realize like even, I mean, we use paper plates quite a bit and just our consumption on so many things. And we've tried to cut back on a lot of that, but I mean, we've talked before how we are shopaholics living a minimalist lifestyle. And I think it's good for us to see a lot of these realities of things that are actually happening because it's making me more conscious and it's making that realization that I do want to make some changes. And I know we'll always need to shop and buy things. There's, we always need groceries. We always need, there's things we will always need. But I think hopefully I can be a more aware and a conscious consumer where I haven't been in the past. Yeah. And it was fun seeing the girls as well, like, kind of develop this like oh we need to pick up this trash at the beach because the manatees are right over there and mm -hmm. we don't want them to eat it oh totally so, yeah like it, it was just at this beach and they met with the ranger and the ranger was showing them hey this is the trash pail and i just go get trash and the girls were just on a roll loving it picking up trash yeah they spent two hours just walking around the beach just picking up trash load after trash load in this green bucket filling it up and then taking it back out and i honestly can't believe how much was in that trash it was just bottle caps and beer caps and just tons of Random small little things stuff that make turtles sick yeah yeah so. but other animals too and i think that's the thing is we're swimming in that water we're playing in that water and you know i want it to be beautiful for years and years and for lots of generations to be able to enjoy so yeah it's an interesting just feeling like this excitement to learn and this urge to learn and we have a long ways to go but i think it's fun and exciting feeling like oh oh i am finding myself excited to learn again and even just like the different fish that are there we got these cute little fish charts fish identification charts yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and it was so funny david's like oh there's a parrot fish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a spiny lobster <laughs> yep they're learning their animals yeah, so it's just fun having the whole family be excited about learning. And that's something I really enjoyed about this journey. I just feel like for so long I've just been so stagnant on my learning. And this has just been a really great opportunity to just put ourselves in situations to want to learn. And learn more, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty awesome. Packing up and heading out tomorrow. We're headed to St. Augustine, Florida for a week and a half. But we wanted to challenge everyone to try something new this week. Do something that you haven't done before. Yep. Try something new. Yeah. And comment below of what you have tried. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys next time. 